Hi, George here. I'll be showing you how to put a reflection into sunglasses like I've done right here inside of Photoshop Elements. Okay, let's start off with the original file. Let me just bring that one up. And I have that right here. There we go. And I'll dock that in there. Now, the first thing we need to do is to separate out the glasses part of this, the lens part of this, so we can use that to make a layer mask. So let's go up here. Right click on background and choose duplicate layer. I always do that just as a safety. And we'll start by making a selection mask here for the left hand side. Let's just zoom in on that. Maybe not quite that far. That's good enough. And for this kind of a oddball shape here, I like using the polygonal lasso tool. And I'll start someplace easy to spot, like right here in that corner. And then just come around and create your selection. Now, if the polygonal lasso tool is going to want to collapse on you if you click too fast. So take your time, click slowly, make sure there's a bead or two between each click. If you have a curve in there, put your dots closer together. If it's straighter, the lines can go further apart. And just work your way clear around the whole lens here. And sometimes it's a bit of a judgment call as exactly where you need to place that point. But that's fine, just take your best guess at that. If you begin going off your image like this, just hold the space bar down. You can then push the image up and then back to your tool again to continue your selection. And we'll just work around here. And as you get over to this part, you'll notice that there is a reflection of the girl's nose in the glasses. You wanna keep that in this right here. So let's just work up around that. That adds a bit of realism to this. A little bit of messiness right in there. That's okay. We just kind of ignore that. And this goes straight up here and it gets back into the frames. Now the frames have a kind of a shadow side there. We'll keep that shadow side in again, the space bar to hold and move that. Now, right here, we're getting a reflection of part of the frame. So we want to keep that in. And we'll just work our way up and around. And people have asked me how I get such nice smooth lines on these things, get my good placement. It's really just a matter of how I hold my mouse and the mouse pad that I'm using. I have a hard surface mouse pad, so the mouse moves very smoothly on that. And I use a wrist wrist. So I'm moving the mouse with just my fingers. I'm not moving the mouse with my hand or my arm. Basically, the smaller the muscle, the smaller the move. The larger the muscle, the larger the move. So if I want a real nice, smooth, kind of a large, Movement, I'll use the whole hand. If I want just a little movement, I'll use just my fingertips and that wrist rest. Okay, there is our first selection. I'll just use the space bar here to get that back up into the picture like that. And we'll use that to create a layer mask. Go up here, hit the layer mask button, and that masks out just that one side. Okay, let's do the same thing here for the other lens. Go back here to the background, right click, duplicate layer, choose okay. Let's show that layer, here we go. And I'll move the image over here. And again, exact same trick for this side. It doesn't matter if this is above or below the other lens, it doesn't make any difference. And the same thing, I'll find a spot I can find easily like this corner right here. We'll come into this and then begin making our selection. And once again, just take your time as you're putting in your points and work slowly around the lens. I like using the polygonal lasso tool because I can put a point down and then move my tool around to find the next spot that I want to have. And I have all the freedom in the world to do that. And I can get it placed exactly where I want that next point. So it makes it a very accurate tool to use. And we'll just work our way straight across the bottom down here. And you can go outside. Once you're outside, you can go anywhere you want to. And then bring it back in again. And we'll just bring it up around and then finish this side, this lens. There we go, just come over here and bring it right back down over to the beginning point, which is right there. And there's this side, same thing again, layer mask. And there we go, and now I have lenses for both sides created right in here. Now we need to bring in our new picture. So go up here to file, and here we go, I have one of the Eiffel Tower. I have both of these pictures, links for both of these in the description if you want to use my same images when you're trying this out. 
use the Apple Tower picture, it's in color. So let's go ahead, we'll fix that first. And let's just enhance, come down to convert to black and white. Choose OK. There we go, it's now a black and white image. And I'll drag that in here. We can now close that, we're done with that file. No reason to save that. And I'll work on the left-hand side first. I'll take this and I'll drag it above the left side lens. And we can now position this and resize this. Just grab a corner up here and I'll drag that down and that will let us resize this. I want a little bit of the ground showing in the lens down here. And we have to have it up high enough so we're not showing any of the lens in behind. So something like that. And so we're going off the side over here. So I'll put it right about there. Should be pretty good. Choose OK. We can see how this looks by copying our layer mask. Just hold the Alt key down, drag straight up, and that copies the layer mask up onto the new layer. And there's how it fits inside of the picture. And that's pretty good. I think we're OK on that one. Let's do the same thing over here on our next layer, which is this one. And I'm just going to duplicate this layer. Right click, duplicate layer, choose OK. This pulls one underneath so it's above the second lens over here. I'll hide this stuff, and we need to get rid of this layer mask. Right click on the layer mask, and then delete layer mask. Then come down here to the layer underneath. Hold the Alt key down, drag that up, and that copies that layer mask up to here. Now, go over here to the left hand side, and uncheck that little link right there, so that the image is not linked to the layer mask. And then simply grab that image and drag it over like this. We can drag it into this picture over here, into this layer mask area. Okay, so there's our two images. If I show this top one again, there we go. So we have our two images in here. You want to have the right side here a little bit more to the left. That's just the way the curvature of the lens kind of works these things. So there's our basic position now for that, and it should look okay. We're bringing our background in again. And that's not too bad. I think we're working out well here. Let's now take this further and put a distortion onto these images. And for that, let's go up to the top one. Again, come in here and make sure that you uncheck that little link in there, little yellow link. Click on that so it goes away, so that we can then distort the image without damaging the layer mask. Make sure you see the LiPlo outline around the left-hand side of that. If you don't, just double-click on that. Go up here to Filter, come down to Distort, and you want the Liquify filter in here. And this gives you a big brush, and you can then distort your image just by dragging over it like that. Let me just do an undo on that, Control z I'm going to go a bit larger on this. That's pretty good. So it's larger than the Eiffel Tower. And I'm just going to pull it over here like that. Just kind of pull to the right-hand side a little bit. Let's have this bend happening in there. And I can pull down here in the middle as well. Get a bit of a bend happening down there. Okay, that looks good. Choose OK. So there's now a lens distortion happening in here. Let's do the same thing on the second lens. So we'll come down to that layer. Again, make sure you see the light blue outline around the image side. Make sure you don't see that link in the middle. And we'll go back up here to filter. And don't click on this. This will just apply the same thing to the same layer. We want a little bit different distortion on this because it's a different part of the lens. So come down to distort, liquefy. Your brush size should be the same. It will do basically the same thing. But because I'm doing it again, it's going to be a little bit different. It won't be an exact match. And that's what I want and choose OK. There it goes. So you see it's basically the same curve, but it's a bit different. It's not an exact match. OK, that's looking really good. Let's bring our face back in again. Now I want to darken these down a bit. They're too bright, and I want to have some darkening around the edges out here. And we can do that. Let's just back off a bit here on the zoom. Just a little bit. There we go. See more of the face in there. And then let's make a new layer above the left side, new layer button. Over here, left hand side, on your colors, make sure you have black in front, white in back. If you don't, just click on that little icon right here to reset those. Then go up here to the gradient tool. You want to set this at radial, which is the second one over right here. And make sure you're set on the first gradient. This is the foreground to background color gradient. It should be black to white. And then reverse that, you want white to black. There we go. Everything else stays the same. Then come in over here, kind of the upper third and right third, about in there someplace. And then click and drag out a line, kind of like that outside the lens, bottom left, and you should get this kind of a look in here. 
Okay, so now go down to the layer underneath and click on that layer mask. Hold the Alt key down, pull it straight up. And that applies that layer mask onto that layer. And that gives a kind of a nice curve in there for that. So we have that curve happening. Looks more like an actual lens. But we need to blend this into the image underneath. And you can use any blend mode you like, but the one I went with this is a multiply. And that just adds both of those layers together. Do the exact same thing over here on the right-hand side. And that's this layer right down here. Start with a brand new layer. There we go. Go back over to our gradient. We already have that all set up, so that's fine. And you still want to have it about the same spot, which is going to be over here someplace. You can actually begin your gradient outside. Click and drag like that. So the exact same motion does this. And then once again, come down to the layer mask underneath. Hold the Alt key down, drag that up, copies that layer mask. Move back onto the gradient layer and change the blend mode to multiply. And there we go, we've now placed that inside of that lens. Now if you want to adjust your contrast at all, you can do that. Go up to the top Eiffel Tower picture right here and then go over to layer, come down to adjustment layer and levels. Where it says use previous layer, check that, choose okay. Notice that most of the values here are in the right hand side in the white side because the sky was real bright. And that's fine, I just want to increase my brightness. Grab the right side here and pull this in. You can see how that increases the sky area there. You can go as far as you want on that. Obviously too far kind of loses everything. But I'll pull it about halfway up. Now if you get a bit of a ring happening in here or kind of a strangeness up here, that's okay. It still looks normal. But I'll take it about halfway. I think that is enough. We can show and hide this to see how that looks. There's before. There's after, and I think that's just enough. Close that, and then do the exact same thing for the right side lens. Come down to that image layer, back up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer, levels, again, check that checkbox, choose okay. And once again, right hand side here, the white, bring that up, and that just increases the white part, the bright part of that. And there we go, there's our finished image. Let's just back out to fit screen. And I think that works out well. And if you want to learn more about how to use Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that right down there in the description. And if you like this video, click the like button and make sure you subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos in the future. And I'll see you next time.